so a short exact sequence of three groups, A, B, and C, is a way of, first of all, realizing A as being isomorphic to a subgroup of B, in a way in which then allows me to understand C as the group of cosets of that subgroup inside of B. So it's a bit like taking this first row of this arrangement of elements in B and, and implanting it into that table as the first row, and then projecting all these elements onto C, and the requirement in a short exact sequence that the image of this inclusion and the kernel of this projection are equal just means that everything which gets sent to the identity in my group C must have been something which came from A as a part of my subgroup of B. So in this video, I want to talk about why the product is an example of something that a short exact sequence is able to construct, but that that might not always happen in a unique way. That There may be more than one way up to isomorphism to take a product of two groups. So if I know the row that I want and the column that I want, there may be more than one way of producing this table of elements here in the middle for the same given A's and C's. So we've previously seen the example of an external direct product of two groups. And what I'm going to claim is that the external direct product of A and C is always a solution to the product problem. There's always a short exact sequence of A into the direct product of A and C and then onto C. So how would that work? How would I actually make that construction? Let's suppose that these are the elements in my group A, A1, A2, A3, and the identity. Here are my elements in C, C1, C2, and the identity. So I'm going to pretend like this is a direct product of Z4 and Z3 or something, but this is, you know, this works in general as well. Then if this group here in the middle, if this B were the external direct product, that means that the elements in here would all be just the ordered pairs of elements from A, comma, elements from C. So why would this solve the product problem? What would the homomorphisms F and G actually be to make this into a short exact sequence? Well, if you kind of look at my table here, we can get a suggestion for it. Notice that each of the elements from A is getting sent into this table in a way that that element is the first entry in each of the ordered pairs. So A1 is getting sent into these elements here, which all have A1 in their first component. A2 gets sent to these elements, which have A2 in their first component, and so forth. So that suggests that maybe a way of doing this is just to take A and implant it into this direct uh, sum, this external direct product, as just the, the elements on that first row. The, the first component gives, just gives me the, that element of A. So A gets sent to A, comma, the identity of C. So that's I'm sending this directly into the first row. And then the algebra of the external direct product will make sure that this same A is then also the A on the second row and the A on the third row when I add C1, C2 to them. That's how a external direct product works because those factors in the first and the second components of the ordered pair don't interact with one another. I think it's clear to see why this would be a one-to-one -one, uh, homomorphism. It's a homomorphism because all the algebra that happens with A is just going to continue to happen here in the first component of the external direct product of the ordered pair. And any algebra that might happen over here in C is just going to be algebra that happens with its identity element. And so it's not going to screw up any of the algebra that's happening in that first component that came from A. We can also see why it's one to one. In fact, we can go both directions with this, right? Not only can I figure out where A1 goes as an element of B, but I can also figure out where any element of B must have come from, from A. If I pick an element like A3 comma C2 down here, I know that that must have come back from the element A3 inside of A. So this is a one-to-one -one homomorphism, the way that we would want it to be for a short exact sequence. So then what about the second homomorphism that takes me from B onto C? Well, in the same way, we're just going to take the elements of C and think of them as being the second coordinate. So it's just like a projection, right? So the second coordinate of each of these then determines the element of C that I get sent to. So A comma C, ordered pair, gets sent to the element C in the group C. So we can convince ourselves that this external direct product is always a solution to the product problem. And in a situation where I can reverse that first step, so as I was saying a moment ago, I can go backwards on this one-to-one -one function, not just from the first row, but from any element inside of B. 
If you tell me what that element is, a1 comma c1, I can push that element back to a to figure out where it must have come from. And any time when that's the case, whenever this one-to-one -one homomorphism is also reversible, and by reversible what I mean is that there exists a homomorphism h which goes from all of b back to a, such that h composed with g, so g followed by h, gives me the identity on a. When there's that reversibility, as there is in this example, so it's just the projection uh, onto the first coordinate would be an example of a homomorphism h that accomplishes that, then it turns out that this solution is always isomorphic to the direct sum of a with c. So the external direct product of a and c always solves the product problem. But in a situation where this first homomorphism g is not reversible, then there may be other solutions. And so in our next video, what I want to do is explore the other solutions. So under what circumstances uh, can we have a short exact sequence where we know A and we know C, but the product, the group B that, that fills in this middle portion, is not isomorphic to the external direct product of A with C. In the next video, we want to look at the ways in which Z mod 3 and Z mod 2, two very simple cyclic groups that we understand very well, can actually be made into a product in two non-isomorphic ways.